How is it going, everyone? Welcome back to another nightly review. Today, I will be going over the Golden Knights 3-2 shootout victory over the San Jose Sharks. What a game. First, I'm going to cover it as... Uh, let's just go over Patrick Marlowe first. Patrick Marlowe, coming from a Knights fan, is an incredible player. And... I know that he wasn't really there during the uh, first two seasons where this rivalry was forged, but he is one of the faces of the franchise, and I was very impressed to see the cheering on that he was getting at the Fortress, and just the respect that he commanded. He played a pretty good game, too. That helped. And a uh, handshake line at the end of the game. Just what an accomplishment. And uh, people saying, well, uh, Gordie Howe is better. Really? No. Who's debating that? Like, <laughs> well, it doesn't count. Grow up. He did it. This guy has been in the NHL since before I was born, okay? He can, he can get the record. <laughs> And for people saying, oh, well, he held on too long in the NHL. There are far more players who are not as good as Patrick Marlowe hanging on in the NHL. Uh, a certain player in Toronto who uh, Patrick Marlowe is very familiar with is suspect number one. So, anyways... So, Riley Smith did not play. I assume, well, he said he was day-to-day. -day. He didn't play at the end of last game. He played, like, a shift in the third and then didn't play the rest of it. But... Didn't really matter. It was Leonard versus Martin Jones, and shockingly, both of these goalies, including Martin Jones at the Fortress, had incredible games. Both of them played really, really well. And this was probably Martin Jones' best game in Vegas. Like, ever. Easily. So, yeah, the Sharks actually got the first few chances. The first period really showed how many games that the Golden Knights have played in such a short period of time. It really shows just what they're struggling with. So, their first period wasn't great. Their passing was a little off, and they just looked kind of sloppy and disjointed. So the Sharks generated a scramble early, but Trangelo actually shut it down. And then Balsers interfered with White Cloud. It was weird. The Sharks took a shocking amount of penalties. And, well, eventually the Golden Knights would make them pay. But on that power play, the Golden Knights did nothing, and it looked pretty bad. Then. The Golden Knights, at the, uh, after the power play, would generate a scramble, but at the other end of the ice, Kanishov would get his second goal of the season. Just a perfect shot. Leonard didn't see it from the point. There was no assist. Just basically just top corner. Um, so, one nothing. Then, after that, uh, it's Kelman interfering with Theodore. And Tuck would get a big chance on that power play, but other than that, again, not very much. Leonard would then stop Marlowe, who got a breakaway. <sighs> then Leonard would make a huge save on Kelman as well. Then Kane would put a puck off the crossbar. And then McNabb, he saved a goal, pretty much. It was pretty impressive. Maybe the best play Braden McNabb has made all season long. Then Tomas Hurdle would block a shot, and he would go to the room. He would come back in this game and play. Then Wah would get a chance, but that would be the end of the first period. Shots in that period were 11-11, to -11 with the Sharks coming out with the 1-0 lead. Uh, then early in the second, it's Gregor getting his getting a goal, make it 2-0, kind of um, a weak defensive play. I know Leonard was pretty upset about that goal, but I wouldn't really fault him. They really just gave him too much space. And yeah, then Balsers would trip Theodore almost immediately after. And on that power play, it would be Mark Stone getting a goal to get the Golden Knights back in the game from Theodore and Pacioretty 
beautiful deflection. That shot was not going to go in, and Stone made it go in. So beautiful deflection, two to one. Then the Golden Knights get Nashville. Yanmark puts the puck in the net, but because the referee couldn't see the puck, he blew the whistle. <sighs> Joke. These referees this season. In, in general, in the NHL, have been a joke. They need to figure this out because it's been ridiculous this season. And that is another play where it's unacceptable. There was no... <sighs> anyway, then Stevenson would hold Hurdle. Uh, they would get a power play. The Sharks would get a power play out of that. They did nothing on it. Then the Golden Knights took over this game. But Leonard would stop Kane first. Then Carey got robbed by Martin Jones. Petrangelo would get a chance. Marsh would get a chance. Uh, Leonard would rob would stop Shellman. And then Carlson would have a huge block on one of Max Pacioretty's chances. And then Stevenson would get a chip. And then Couture put a puck off the post. He just couldn't get it past Leonard. Um, and that took it to the end of the second. So a little scary there at the end. But the Golden Knights were the much better team in the second period. The shots were 14-7. to Sharks come out 2-1. Then, the third period, the Golden Knights need to score, and they need to score early, is what I said. And what do they do? Stevenson gets a chance, and then Kanishov would high-stick Tuck. And six seconds into that power play, Mark Stone, getting his second of the game, would make it 2-2 from Pacioretty and Theodore. So basically the same scoring trio. Got both goals. Then Yanmark would get stopped on a breakaway. Martinez would then put a puck off the crossbar. And Carrier missed on a huge chance. At this point in the game, it was all Golden Knights. They dominated, at the very least, the first part of this third period. The Sharks would push back more at the end. But the final few minutes were the Golden Knights game. Uh, then, Simic would trip Stevenson, which would generate a power play. The Golden Knights didn't have long to do that before Yanmark would hold Hurdle. It was a little interesting. No, no, that was the valid one. The Stevenson hold on Hurdle was, that was the one that was a little suspicious. But then uh, Tuck would get a chance on the 4-on-4, and Leonard would stop a scramble while on that penalty kill, but the Golden Knights did come out of it. Couture would then go to the room after getting destroyed by Braden McNabb. Uh, Couture would come back. But Braden McNabb, a solid, clean hit. I know Sharks fans weren't up, weren't very happy about it. But if you watch the hit, it's a clean hit. He hits him right here. So there's no problem with the hit. It was just a good hard hit. Couture had the puck. McNabb stick-checked the puck away from him while he hit him. He didn't pass it away and then get hit. If you watch the play... McNabb poke checks the puck away and hits him. Basically at the same time. In real time, it really didn't matter. So, Sharks fans, be quiet. Anyways, after that, Sharks would push and Leonard would stand tall. And then William Carlson would get a chance. Uh, Couture would return to the game at that point. Leonard would then stop Meyer twice. Then... Leonard would stop a scramble, and then the Golden Knights really pushed near the end of the period, and uh, Puck slipped through Martin Jones, got to the goal line in the final seconds, and Mario Ferraro would save a goal and force this game to overtime. So, if I was a San Jose fan, you better believe that would be a little iffy. But shots in the third, 11-10 shockingly for San Jose, and in overtime, that was a fun but stressful overtime, my lord. It was, there were so many chances, mostly for the Golden Knights. But, man. So, Patch Reddy would a chance, and then the Golden Knights would shut down a three-on-one the other way. And immediately after, Stone gets a breakaway, he gets stopped by Martin Jones. Then, Shea Theodore would get robbed by Jones. Leonard would then stop Meyer. And then, Stone got robbed again. And then, Patch Reddy would put a puck off the post. And Leonard would stop Marlowe to end overtime. So, again, Marlowe getting some chances. Luckily, Robin Leonard stood tall. Again, now we go to a shootout. Shots in overtime were 5-2. to two. Total shots in the game were 40-31 to 31 for the Golden Knights. But it's 2-2 two to two going into overtime. 
First player for the Sharks, Patrick Marlowe. He comes up, gets stopped by Leonard. Remember, Robin Leonard does not have a good record in the shootout. I believe he had one win up to this point. So forgive me if I was a little worried. But Robin Leonard made some big saves. Then Alex Tuck would come down and score. Then Donato would come down and he would get robbed by Leonard. Then Stevenson would go down and he would get stopped by Jones. And then Logan Couture would get stopped and Robin Leonard would win the game. So there we go. The Golden Knights win 3-2 to two in the shootout. What a game. That was a fun one. The Golden Knights did look tired in the first, but they really picked it up in the second and third to come in and, and take this game home. It was a pretty impressive job for them to come in and still find a way to win, even with how tired they were. Even Peter DeBoer said after the game that it was the most tired that they'd been all season. Now, they don't play again until tomorrow night, and then they were going to have a back-to-back -back this weekend, but the game against San Jose on Friday got moved. So they do get a two-day break between today, uh, between Wednesday and Saturday. So for the final time this season, they get a two-day break. So lucky them. Let's hope against Anaheim on Saturday they do some good work. So with that being said, if you want to get my thoughts on the game during the game, you can follow me on Twitter at 2 underscore pad. Congratulations to Patrick Marlowe on breaking the all-time games record with his 1768th game. Who's ready for the 1769th? Anyways, guys, that is it for this one. I will see you next time.